Hi, Humanities 4141. Uh, and today we're looking at uh, Disconnected by uh, Carrie James, and we're exploring morality, ethics, and digital life. Before we get into the chapter itself, just a quick word on your particular research when exploring this text. The book is different from the Dana Boyd book that we read in the first term, in part because Boyd and James are different types of scholars. And this is an important point to remember in your own research. In the same way in first year and second year, as you read about children's literature, some of the questions you ask are, who is the author of this text? And who is the intended audience of this text? Who is the publisher of this text? And how do those things, or how do those factors influence the meanings that are inherited, or, um, inherent in the text itself, and how does it affect how we deconstruct the text? The same is true when reading uh, academic texts. So uh, Carrie James is a sociologist that is very different than uh, Dana Boyd, who is a critical theorist. And so they approach the, the, the topics from different vantage points, even though they both uh, use empirical research or primary research with young people themselves, they have different entry points into the research. Plus, let's not forget that the James book, as you read in the introduction, is funded uh, by a very particular foundation. That influences how the story gets told. It happens within a particular university, Harvard University, Project Zero. That influences how, the, how this uh, research is being disseminated. It happens within a particular department at, the, in Har at Harvard, uh, and that is the Graduate School of Education, and that influences how the story is told, and it happens in partnership with another individual, uh, Dr. Gardner, who himself is very well known, and that influences how the stories are being told here as well. So always being critical of any text that we uh, read, interrogating the text. Remember, we're looking for what bias is there. We're also looking for what stories are, are telling us. And then we're, we're, we're always thinking about how can we connect this back to uh, young people's lives? Because in the same way that we want to deconstruct all right, the many different constructions of youth and the way that those work to empower or disengage young people in their everyday lives. Uh, we have to remember that even scholars themselves are creating constructions as they work to deconstruct, and that's what's happening here in the James text. And hopefully you see immediately there's a difference between uh, the story that James is telling and the one that you get from Dana Boyd. James even says so herself towards the end of the chapter where she outlines her research when she says, I'm more of a half glass, half glass half empty <laughs> i'm more of a half empty glass or half glass empty person than half glass full wow that was really difficult for me i don't know why i stumbled on that so much but the point here is she tends to focus more on the pessimistic uh viewpoint of technology with young people's lives versus the utopian or optimistic uh, viewpoint and we know that both of those exist out there we know that they're both discourse around young people's lives and technology and we know that they both actively work to empower or disengage young people from the political processes and the decision making processes in their everyday lives so we're getting a different look here as we look at it through the lens of James and that's important to remember from the very beginning. But this chapter itself looks at morality, ethics, and digital life. And the big point within this chapter is that, you know, James feels that young people themselves, when they participate in online spaces, are not always thinking about moral or ethical dilemmas. In fact, sometimes uh, she goes as far as to argue that uh, young people lack the empathy required to make moral and ethical decisions in virtual spaces or even in, in physical public spaces uh, because you know um, part of the technology the use of technology works to actively disengage that empathy very interesting point and one to consider as we go forward because it is a valuable point even if we maybe disagree with some of the other things that james is arguing so i want you to look at the distinction here between moral and ethical moral the James uses to describe uh, the disposition to care, to show empathy, to engage uh, a principal in one's interactions with a known individual or small group, okay? Versus uh, ethical, which is a more abstract concept, one that speaks to one's actions in a wider, often distant community and public. And that's the one that we're really thinking about here because when we explore young people's lives in digital spaces and network publics, many of the individuals in those spaces are not known to the, to the person themselves. Just think about your own Facebook friends or your own uh, Twitter followers, your own Instagram followers, or the people that you follow in those uh, social media spaces or other. You know, yes, there is a core group that you are probably very close with and you know them and they know you and you have physical and non-physical interactions, you have digital and non-digital interactions actions and, and that's part of who you are and what you are about. But there's also probably a large group of people who you follow 
or who follow you who you don't actually know other than through digital interactions. All right, other than through your uh, you know, communication via network publics uh, and network spaces. And, and, and so how does that uh, alter your interactions with them or with others? Not to mention the people who, um, you know, that you maybe don't even engage with, but who engage with you, right? So if, <laughs> if you follow uh, a news channel or a celebrity on any of these things and you're constantly like, you know, I follow um, uh, Sebastian Javinko on Instagram, right? So I watch Sebastian Javinko. I feel like I know all about him and his family and his current vacation that he's on uh, while Toronto FC are on holiday. But I mean, I have no real interaction with Sebastian Javinko and yet, you know, somehow everything that he posts has an impact or an influence in me and my individual life. Well, the same is true for young people, not just for Sebastian Javinko. Everything that they are posting has a trickle effect as it runs through social media. There's the immediate effect and the immediate circle around it. So the immediate direct circle, the people for whom it is posted, who's the intended audience. I'm posting this and putting this out there for my friends to see. I had breakfast at this restaurant. The French toast was delicious. I took a picture of said French toast and I immediately put it on Instagram for all my friends to see. I maybe Snapchatted it with, you know, with a little bit of a comment and sent it to a couple others. Awesome. That immediate circle gets it. But everybody else who follows me or maybe who follows those other people, depending on how I tagged them and brought them into the conversation, now also gets to see about my French toast and how does that therefore impact them? Does it make them hungry? Does it make them jealous? Uh, does it make them angry because maybe I was supposed to be at a meeting and instead of being at the meeting, I was having French toast? Who knows? The point being multiple layers of interaction to every social media post multiple layers of individuals that are being engaged with for every social media post every social media interaction and that is directly affecting the lives of young people we start to get this in this book but again the research in this book is a little bit old if you get to the end of this chapter what we get from james is a really nice discussion about how james does uh, her research and what's important for us in that for it to remember is that we are going to do primary research empirical research with young people ourselves at the, at the end of this term and so james does a nice job at the end of this chapter laying out how her research worked. What were the, the, the ways in which she laid it out? What were the questions that she asked? How did she ask those questions? How did she engage with the young people? And then you know, what was the process by which she then unpacked that research? She's also very good at laying out and saying, these are the things that I looked at and these are the things that I didn't look at. These are the things that I thought I was good at uh, unpacking and these are the things I thought I wasn't good at unpacking. And we want, to we want to remember that formula because when we do our own empirical research, we are going to write a piece just like that. It's going to say, this is what I'm researching. This is what I'm hoping to find. Uh, this is, what I'm, this is what, I, uh, what I'm finding out. This is, what I'm, you know, uh, this is how I'm hoping the research itself will go. Uh, the, you know, these are the young people that I'm working with. These are the conditions under which we're working. All of that we're going to do in our proposal as we get a little bit farther with the project, that will come. Don't stress. You'll have lots of time to work on that. But at the very end of that part, at the very end of the chapter, James gives us a little tidbit. And this is how I tied, tied back the part about social media interaction and your research project and James discussing research. Here's where it all comes together. Because there's a very good chance what we work on at the end of this term is similar to what James says in the last chapter she discusses this is an area of a need for a little bit more empirical research and that is how is how are these blind spots how can these blind spots be corrected within social media we will get to that point but just remember this 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 research takes place 2008 to 2011 2012 it's a little bit older right it's it's, it's talking about a different social moment when technology is actually different and the lives of young people and the way it works there is actually different from it is at this present moment. So any ideas that we take and bring forward into the present, we can do so, but we have to do so knowing that we're talking about a small segment, roughly 100 kids, okay, in the United States, and we want to then take that and bring that in, you know, from a decade ago to 2018, Canada, Toronto, GTA, I mean, there, there are, there are some, I'm putting heavy quotations here, universals, some things that work across that are easily movable and there are others that are not. Let's also not forget that 2008 in the United States is a very different social political moment than 2018. So even if we're talking about the United States itself, we're talking about a very different type of um, 
growing up experience, just based on the simple uh, fact of who the president of the United States is in, in, in those two uh, particular universe. So why do I give you all this information? Because I think it's a really good chapter to start us on the discussion of what is happening in the, the decision-making processes uh, of young people's lives in digital spaces and network publics. I want you to start to interrogate and ask more critical questions in the second term. And that's why the postings are worth 5% instead of 3% in the second term, because we want you to dig just a little bit deeper. I want you to make connections between Boyd and between James. I want you to bring in the UNCRC. I want you to bring in your own experience. I want you to go out into the news right now and find out what's happening in the news right now and bring that into it. And that, of course, is your first assignment. Your first assignment is to do very much like what we did for your final assignment uh, in December. In December, I gave you a news article I talked about iPhones and anxiety and depression in young people, and I asked you to unpack it using James and the UNCRC and your experience in the Children's Studies program. That what you're going to do in week one of, of this uh, unit or this module, uh, boring on the James text, is you're going to go out into the media. You're going to find an article or a posting or a video or something that is very current, as in in 2018, so don't go back to 2017. In 2018, find something that is very current, right, within the last two weeks uh, that discusses young people, social media, digital culture, network publics, that engages on some level, small or large, with moral or ethical dilemmas. And then you are going to briefly summarize, so 30 to 45 seconds, briefly summarize the article. Then you are going to interrogate the article Ask questions about what does it say? What's its research process? How does it come about its assumptions? Are they proper? What, what is missing? Again, 45 seconds to maybe a minute, a minute 15. And then you are gonna identify the blind spots in, in this article itself and potential ways to correct the blind spots by connecting it back to James, the UNCRC, or other information you have from the Children's Studies program. Here we go. Now we are digging deeper. Now we're going to the next level. And again, that's how you get the 5% in the, here now because we are doing more. So you're going to find an article. You're going to interrogate that article. You are going to identify the blind spots in that article. And you are going to suggest how to correct those blind spots by making connections to James, the UNCRC, and other things that you have read and experienced while at the, in the Children's Studies program. Thanks so much and have a great day.